welcome back to Fat Mama Physics. In this video, we are going to talk about how to calculate your slope uncertainty. And uh, why you might do that is because as you further, further analyze the slope of your graph, make meaning out of it, you might need this uncertainty in your slope to show some uncertainty in the final answer. For example, uh, some you might be doing a lab with uh, where you're trying to find the acceleration due to gravity. As you analyze your final slope of your at your linearized graph, I'll talk about it in a minute, is that you might find that as you take the uh, slope, you manipulate it a little bit, you get the acceleration due to gravity, or what it should be the acceleration due to gravity. Because you have this value, you will also would like to have uncertainty attached to that, so you can f further analyze the meaning and the um, the errors in uh, that you've got in your lab. Okay, so this is why we you, you look at slope uncertainty for further. Uh, data propagation, propagation of that to make meaning of it. So before you look into this video, uh, you, I expect you to already know how to find the slope of a graph. I expect you to have a, a linear graph. So that uh, could be your graph is already linearized. But let's say you had to take uh, your original graph, you have to manipulate it in a way to produce a linear graph. That's called linearization. So definitely you should know how to linearize your graph and have linearized it already. You should have your error bars on your linearized graph. And if that means you have to propagate your uncertainties from your original data values, then you should have already done that as well. So you should know how to propagate your uncertainties in order to do this one. And that should be it. So then let's talk about how to find slope uncertainty. Okay. Now I have this uh, graph as an example here is uh, you, I have these really big error bars, which may not be the case for your experiment, but I'm just demonstrating this as a way to kind of show you what ideally how it should be done. After I talk about this, then maybe we can discuss a little bit about what actually might happen in a lab and how could you go about doing finding the slope uncertainty. So to find the slope uncertainty, you need three slopes. <laughs> You're like, three slopes? What? You need three lines, okay? Of course, you need the best fit line. And um, I'm going to do my best to draw a best fit line on this graph. And uh, if you're just looking at this graph here, I have a displacement versus time squared graph. It's a very rough. And uh, notice my time squared. I have the unit squared here as well. I have a title here at the top. I'm going to draw a straight line as best as I could that goes through all of my error bars roughly through the middle as much as I can. Keep in mind that this line, best fit line I'm drawing, should be the best representation of the line that kind of meanders through the middle-ish of your dots. Please do not draw, do not connect the dots. <laughs> That's in elementary school. We don't do that. So I'm going to do my best here. So I think... That's kind of my best job at drawing the best fit line there. And um, there is no perfect, no right answer for your best fit line. It's is the best that you can do, essentially. Okay. So if, say, on a test or whatever, on a lab or whatnot, I'm not going to check exactly the number that you have for your best fit line because it's, you know, it's the best that you can do. There is no correct answer. You just do the best. If you drew some line that's way off, then, of course, I'm going to talk about it. But otherwise, you will be fine. Now, the next line that I'm going to draw, and you're going to do this with a ruler. I get to do it on a computer, which I have a little bit of advantage, is uh, I will... The next line that I'm going to draw is I'm going to try to draw the steepest line that I can make based off of the error bars that I have in my data points. So what does that look like generally? And this is speaking from an ideal perspective, which never happens in the lab. <laughs> but imagine all of my error bars will form kind of like a little box, a little box containing all the possibilities of where that data point could be. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to shade it off so you can see what I mean. I'm going to take this bottom one here and let's imagine I can draw a little box 
that covers up all the possibilities here. So notice I'm drawing a box that outlines the edges of my error bars. So that's like a box of possibilities, if you want to think about it like that. Okay, so I kind of can shade this in if you want to, whatever. And I'll do it for the last one because those are the two error bars that I will use when I'm going to determine my my uh, steep my steepest slope and my my minimum slope. I'm going to need those two lines. Okay, so let's form a line. I'm going to start with my steepest one, and to do the find the steepest line. We are going to start. So when you have when you have when you have a ruler, I'm going to put one edge of my ruler against this point here. If you can see where my cross is, it's at the very bottom on the uh if you're looking at it from my perspective, it's going to be the right as right side, the very bottom of that air box. And then on my other side of my ruler, I'm going to position that at the top left corner of my error box. So that is going to give me the largest possible slope that I can generate from all of these error boxes from my data points. And then my ch and then before I kind of draw my line, I'm just going to double check my purple line, which is my steep. Oh, whoopsies. I already did it. But anyway, so what you want to do is you want to make sure this purple line is able to intersect all of these error boxes that I ha that uh, I have. So notice this intersects this error box here. It goes through this error box. It does touch this error box and it touches this error box as well as the bottom. And there you go. That's a check. Good. That's a check for our steepest slope. I'm going to call that our maximum slope line. Let me write that down so we do we remember. And of course, this one was our best slope, best slope line. And you guessed it. The next one we're going to do, we're going to draw our minimum slope line. And uh, that's going to be instead of go starting off at the bottom, we are going to start off at the top. And I'm going to start at the top left corner here of my error box. And then I'm going to go to the very bottom of my error box is going, but it's going to be on the right end of my last error box over here. I'm going to double check it crosses all the error boxes in my other data points and I'm going to let go or in your case use your ruler to draw the line. And there we go. That's my minimum slope line. And if you don't believe me, you can play around with the ruler and to see if you get the minimum slope line from the different ways you can position your ruler. Okay, this is just a quick and dirty, the easiest way to do it. Minimum slope line. Okay, so now I have all my slope, all my lines, I can now go in and calculate all of my slopes. And again, in this video, I do expect you to know how to find the slope of a line. If you don't, maybe do some review, watch some other videos. So I'm just going to uh, probably just fast play this part or just rush through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate all the values of my slopes, max, best, and min. Okay, wow. Imagine doing all that work on the computer screen. Not good for your eyes. Okay, so let's just, um, okay, let's just fill in some blanks here. Okay, so what I wrote here is uh, if you don't remember your rise and uh, your slope, that's your rise divided by your run. I actually use the data points instead so that I can um, actually use some proper numbers and values. So I use the coordinates at two points. Notice I use them as far away as possible. And uh, notice it was easier to pick the points that were on grid lines as opposed to not. Even if it's one grid line, it's better than no grid lines to reference from. And uh, max slope, minimum slope, then I have the best slope I've written here. And notice I did not round anything, okay? Because we haven't decided our certainties, so uh, that's why we haven't done that. Now, whew, this is what I want to get to this video, and I finally got to it. Okay, to find the uncertainty of your slope, and usually, and what that means is the uncertainty of your best slope to be, to be um, accurate. It's pretty much what we've been dealing with before. It's your range of possibilities divided by two. So here it is. 
And in other words, it's your max slope minus your min slope and all of that divided by two, okay? Okay, so then now I'm going to, uh, let's calculate that right now. Okay, and I'm gonna put that in my calculator. Okay, I get, and forget the negative sign, it was just me flipping it. Okay, so 1.063 and uh, units of meters per second squared. Okay, so now I have everything I need to finally write my slope and its slope uncertainty at the very end. So I'm gonna quickly check this uncertainty here is definitely bigger than, <laughs> much bigger in fact, than one person, it's bigger than 2% of my actual slope value. So I only need to round it to one significant figure. And that's going to be, the zero rounds the one, not it doesn't round it up, so I get one meters per second squared as my absolute uncertainty for my slope. My actual slope value is 1.6 meters per second squared, and I have the six is going to round my one up to a two. Wow, that's some big rounding there. Very ugly rounding. <laughs> oh well, nothing you can do if your data is going to be all over your place, right? So here we have it, okay? This is how you slope uncertainty. So then at the, after you do your slope uncertainty, you do need to have someone some, write it somewhere very clearly, your slope and your slope uncertainty, round it correctly with the correct units before you do more work with it, okay? Now I'm gonna quickly do a little discussion on what your data might look like and uh, of course, it's going to be a lot harder to do your maximum slope if you have very small error bars, right? So here is a uh, lab. This is a, uh, a graph that I, a student had. I'm not going to name the student, of course, and this student did it on Excel. There's a few things I'm just going to point out. Um, I wasn't able to find many examples, but uh, this one had a, showed a good example of what difficulties you might run into when you are dealing with max and min slopes, okay? Uh, just to be sure, uh, making sure that whenever you're doing a graph, um, try to have it at the origin. And of course, that's why we want a big graph. Not that a student didn't do a good job, but you know, there's student things that this student I did that I liked. It was a good, this is a good title. Uh, maybe capitalize that first one would be good. Some uh, inconsistencies in fonts over here. And I do like the fact that the student put the, um, the exponents for the, uh, for the tight the the axes and the units although it would have been nicer if the student actually were able to show the square root of length instead so kind of like that but uh, if not i mean this is it's it's feasible it's doable uh i guess this probably was in the middle of his work so that the slope are the slope values are not rounded and then we have here, we have the slope over here for this particular graph. Okay, now the f nice thing, hey, Excel actually plots the best fit line for you. Isn't that convenient? Okay, so the here we have a line and uh, we, we do have some error bars. So how do we do the maximum slope? Because notice if we take the uh, bottom of this, gr uh, this error bar here and we try to match it with this guy up here, we draw a line and this can be hard to do. So notice if we do that here, let me do a better job. So let's say we draw this max slope the way that I showed you before. Notice this line is unable to touch those error boxes with all of the uh, the, the uh, your data points. Same thing if I do the minimum slope. So going from the top and then touching the bottom over here. So here notice that I took, uh, that's, it's a little off because it's a computer. If I took the, the two endpoints and then I just tweak the, um, the lines to give me the max min slope, notice it doesn't quite go through all of these uh, error bars for all the data points. So then you might be thinking, well then, if I can't do that, what do I do? If I had to give an answer to you, I would say there is no right answer. And it might have to do with your own situation. Uh, in terms of what your data looks like, 
thing that you do want to do is at least your best fit slope is able to uh, give a good representation for every data point. You kind of want to do that with your maximum slope. And I can kind of show you what you could do here as a possible solution for this particular example. So here, I'm going to delete this minimum minimum line here, and I'm going to do it again. And notice what happened was uh, if it, in the maximum slope that you see here, notice that this data point was completely left out. This guy in the middle is just hanging around, and it kind of doesn't, it's, it's not really within that line. What you could do is, here is a solution I have to offer. It's not absolute, it's not be all end all. But what I could do is I could look at my data points and let's say I, I think this, this data point down here is a pretty good starting point. I could start off from this end and then notice my this data point here that is down here, it didn't get represented quite well in the, uh, in the maximum slope. So I'm going to do that for the minimum slope. I'm going to include that in my minimum slope, which then kind of leaves out this, uh, this data point that's up there, uh, which is not included in my minus, minimum slope. But because I have done this, I am able to kind of encompass all of the data points within my minimum and maximum slope. And that's what I want to do. I want the idea here is I want to be fair to all the data points that I've collected in this lab. I can't just willy nilly just forget about one because you don't fit in my line. <laughs> you can't really do that. Um, unless it's way off, then that's an outlier problem. And there's another set of thoughts and ideas and analyses, you'll have to deal with that. But now that I've done this, notice that I was also able to include this middle point here that had very tiny error bars in within my scope. So note my maximum slope now is able to encompass all of my data points. So I have an explanation, I can be fair to all of these data points. The next steps, of course, I would take is find the minimum slope, find the maximum slope, and then uh, eventually do my uncertainty calculations for slope, exactly what we did above. But um, this is a case, an odd case, and you might encounter these cases. If you were doing this one on Excel, let's say you were doing on Excel, then I might have mentioned in my previous video on Excel is that you might have to manually type in numbers to help you adjust the two points to make a line that best represents your data. Okay, so then um, some manual adjustments. Okay, so of course, if you're doing by this hand, you can just do it with the ruler. But then for uh, if you're doing it on Excel, and Excel spits out the, the slope for you, then you would have to do manual adjustments. Okay, so may hopefully this video uh, will help you with your future labs, give you some tools, and of course, show you how to do slope uncertainty, which is required. I thank you for watching and being patient with me. And I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> and if you're never sure, you could always, in class, you can ask me how you can tackle minimum maximum slope for your particular graph, okay? Great job, guys. See you next time on Fat Mama Physics signing out.